Hi everyone, welcome to Mark's 900. I'm Mark and today we're going to do a bike review. No surprises, this time it's going to be on the Kawasaki Z900. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that just because I've got a Z900, I'm going to go easy on it. In fact, quite the opposite. I've been riding this bike for the last eight months. I've done about six and a half thousand miles on it. So I feel kind of qualified to talk about all the good points, but also all the bad points. Okay, so let's crack on then, have a look around the bike. The Z900 falls into the category of naked middleweight. Now that might seem a bit odd, because when you look at the spec sheet of this, you can see that it's got a 948cc engine with four cylinders. Now that's more of a heavyweight, but I guess the idea of a naked heavyweight brings up all the wrong kind of ideas. So I guess you've got to ask yourself, who would buy a bike like this? And the answer's got to be somebody like me. I've only got room in the garage for one bike and I've only got the finances for one bike. So I need something that's good at everything. I need something that I can commute on every single day reliably. I need something that I can go blasting across the countryside on at weekends. I need something that maybe I'll go on the occasional track day. I want to go touring. I want to sit outside a cafe and I want my bike to sit there in front of me looking really cool. And I want to look back at it on the petrol station and think, yeah, that is my bike. And I guess the final thing is that it should come in at around about £10,000 or maybe a little bit less just to be competitive. I'm going to talk you through now each of those categories. Might even give it a score out of five for each one. And I'm going to start off with tomorrow morning's commute. Before I do that, what I want to do is have a quick look at the display and the handlebars, that all important view that you get from the rider position. Let's have a look at this display then. When you turn the ignition on, it comes up really quickly, which I like. Shows you all the information that you need to know in a very clear way. So you've got the gear, you've got the uh, amount of revs, miles per hour, and then a load of information at the bottom, such as uh, the odometer reading, total time, temperature, that sort of stuff. And that can be cycled through with these two buttons that you can press, and it will give you lots of different information. Also on the handlebars, you've got this select button, which will take you through the rider modes, road, sport and uh, rider mode where you can choose how much traction and power you want for the bike. That's pretty much it for the display. Looking at the handlebars over on the left you've got the usual buttons for indicators, horn, dip and dazzle, all that kind of thing and then over on the right it's the usual start stop um, and that's pretty much it as far as the handlebars go. So it's a very uncomplicated, uncluttered dashboard and one that I really like. So let's talk about Kawasaki's Rideology app, which sits on your phone and links to the bike via Bluetooth. Then it takes the telemetry from the bike and puts it with the GPS data. So there you can see all my recent routes that I've ridden. And um, if you click on one of those, you can go into it and look at the sort of maximum speed you were doing, average speed, miles per gallon, all that kind of thing. The other thing you can do is actually play back a journey. So if I skip onto the next page, um, I can play back a journey. I'm going to play it back at times 50. And there's a dot on the map at the top part of the screen which shows me where I was and then all the information about the bike. Now it's fairly limited information because you haven't got things like lean angle and so on. So it's quite good fun this app. It's a bit of a novelty and if I'm honest with you it wears off pretty quick. So uh, there we go. That's the Rideology app. Now then, let's go on and talk about the daily commute. Here we go then. It's a dark and fairly cold October morning. The bike will start first time every time on the button which is fantastic. And did you know with these bikes, when they start, the throttle opens slightly, it's a mechanical thing, and you can actually physically close the throttle so that the uh, the revs drop and you can put it into gear more easily. There you go, works every time. Fantastic, I just learned that the other day on the internet. So, enough waffle, let's get down the road. So we're gonna set off then, and absolutely no problem riding this bike when it's cold, it feels fine. I know a lot of people say these Kawasaki's have got fueling issues and they're a little bit sort of twitchy and jerky at lower speeds, but I've really not had any of that trouble at all. You should be getting an idea now of just how dark it is in this uh, early October morning. Of course, I've ridden the bike when it's been absolutely pitch black and the headlights are really good on it as well. So moving off up this road, um, one thing you'll notice is that on the right hand side, there's a lot of these dotted white lines with the diagonal chevrons next to it. Now, that area, as far as I understand from the highway code, means that I can enter that. It's not part of the main highway, but I can go into that area if it's uh, necessary and safe to do so. Now, I'm just about to come up to a really busy roundabout where I think I'm going to find it's very necessary and safe to do so. So every morning, without fail, it's one of these places, always going to be a queue of traffic. 
and then when you're in a car of course you've just got to get in that queue of traffic and the one thing you want from a commuter bike more than anything is that ability to flick around the edge of the cars and get straight to the front of the queues i guess the other thing you need is a bike that starts first time every time and it, it ticks that box as well so really pleased with this bike as a commuter bike so here we go then we've got this queue of traffic coming up i'm going to pop into the right hand side cross over that and there you can see uh, we've got a tyre track right through the middle of this set of chevrons where everybody does it so um, we're filtering off down the side of the traffic and then onto the roundabout we're going to go straight to the front and as ever I'll also be the first thing to pull out straight past all the cars brilliant so really love this bike for the commute and it gives me a, a feeling of confidence as well, especially when I've got these cars pulling onto the roundabout. I know they can see me because I've got bright headlights and I've got quite a nice presence on the road. So we'll fly around this roundabout and when it gets really busy, I'll go straight around the queue of traffic that's also coming off the end of this roundabout. Uh, what's this lady doing? Um, okay, that's unusual. <laughs> we don't usually get anyone crossing the road there. Um, but anyway, we'll carry on down this road, give a quick nod to the bike. Well, it was a scooter, but we'll let him off. And then once we're finished on that bit of road, I'm into my country lanes. So we've got a chance for the bike to show off a little bit now. We've turned into a country lane. There's not really any traffic in front of me. If I'd left 10 minutes later, it probably would be a huge queue of traffic that I'll be trying to overtake right now. But I've got a nice open road, but you can see that we've got a lot of lime water and it's also a very bumpy road, but the bike takes it all in its stride, absolutely no problem. That's partly to do with the tires that I put on it. The standard Road Sport 2s I thought were really good, but now I've stuck a, a set of Metzlers on and it's even better. So um, top tip there, get yourself a decent set of tires, but you probably knew that already. So here we are back in suburbia and um, you can tell we're in Cheltenham because of all the roadworks. So, as I weave through this traffic now, I've got to think about is there any sort of downside to the bike? Is there anything I don't like about it? And I suppose the one thing is that the um, if there is any water on the road, the bike is absolutely brilliant at flicking that water all over my back. The rear mudguard on the bike does absolutely nothing. Now that might be something to do with the tail tidy I've fitted, but I'm afraid I will have to knock it down a point for that. Anyway, here we are, queue of traffic once again and uh, I don't tend to filter whilst the traffic is moving like this. I remember my biker down course that said if you're going through traffic and filtering you should be doing no more than five miles an hour faster than the traffic itself. So uh, I'm going to wait for it to come to a stop and then weave my way through the middle of there. Hopefully there's room but generally with this bike there's going to be room. So there we go traffic stopping and uh, absolutely no problem at all getting through that lot. We're going to get straight to the front of the queue here. There we go moving up to the line just wait for the lights to go green and when the lights do go green i'm going to be the first off the mark so there's the commute then i've got to think to myself just uh, how many stars out of five would i give it well as i say because of the issues about the water flicking over my back when it's wet i'm going to drop it a star and i'm going to give it four out of five for the commute so with a score of four out of five let's move on then go to the other end of the scale and talk about using this bike on the track So let's talk about the Z900 as a track bike then. Well, to my mind, there's two things you need. One is speed and the other one's performance. So in terms of speed, we've got a 948cc engine that will take you to 150 something miles an hour and does naught to 60 in 3.1 seconds. That's probably more than I'll ever need, more than you need for the road. And it, I guess it's about right for the track. Now you can get an engine remap because of course, this like many other new bikes is tuned to Euro 5. So yeah, sure, you can, you can remap the engine and get even more power out of it for the track if you want to. In terms of the brakes and suspension then, it would seem that there are two names that you really need on your bike in order to take part in track days and win at top trumps in the pub, and that is Olin Suspension and Brembo Brakes. So it doesn't have the names that we need. Now, I'm not nearly talented enough to know exactly what the difference is, but what I do know is that over on Bike World, there's a guy called Chris, who is one of the best riders I've seen on and off-road. Now, he went back into racing and Kawasaki gave him a Z900 to race on, but even Kawasaki swapped out the suspension and the brakes. So they kind of admitted themselves that that's what needs to be done. Coupled with that, of course, is the fact that there's a new Z900 coming out, the Z900 SE, and guess what? The SE has got 
Olins and Brembos. So I can only assume then that the setup on this is absolutely fine for the road and it's probably fine for 90% of us if we're honest. But if you really are a high-end track user, then this really isn't the right setup or the right bike for you. Just one other thing to bear in mind is that there are other bikes in this category that are much better on a track. So something like a Triumph Street Triple RS is much lighter and much more elegant on a track than this because it is quite a big lump. So for those reasons then, I'm going to give this what I think is a very generous two stars out of five. And it loses points because of that fact that there are better bikes in its category, uh, its handling, um, because of the suspension and because of those brakes. Now, the new Z900 SE might be a different game altogether because that's going to have the uprated brakes and suspension. And I think that answers most of the questions that we've got. And I'm probably going to give that four stars out of five. But for this stock one, just the two, I'm afraid. Okay, let's go and talk about then um, my favourite topic, which is blasting across the countryside on a Sunday morning. Here we are then, once again on my favourite stretch of road. We're on the A46 going up towards Painswick and Stroud. And this is where this bike comes into its own. We're just blasting through the countryside for no reason other than to just meet up with mates and go for a coffee. It is absolutely fantastic. It eats up these bends, it feels completely planted, and it's just a joy to ride. We haven't got a whole bunch of sophisticated electronics. In fact, what we've got is ABS, traction control, rider modes, LED indicators, and it's still, the throttle is um, cable operated. So there's no quick shifter that comes uh, standard with this. In fact, even the Z900 SE model doesn't come with a quick shifter either. So again, it's not geared towards the track and it hasn't got all that complicated gadgetry. You just turn the bike on and go. And as I say, it's a complete joy to ride. So as we proceed off up this hill, you can see that I'm going into the bends lovely there and then just powering out of them. This long right hander we've got coming up is a particular challenge. It's also quite bumpy and the bike does throw me around a little bit here. But as soon as we come out of it, hopefully you'll hear the bike. And that is one of the great things about this engine. It makes a fantastic noise when you power it really hard out of a corner and get that engine working. And it's so smooth while it does it. So my mates ride this bike and they always say to me that it's like getting onto a sewing machine because it is just so buttery smooth. Now, I've ridden other bikes like that Speed Triple that I rode the other week. And when I got off that and then got back onto my bike, it just felt like I was riding a cloud. So yeah, it is really smooth and very very powerful absolutely love it for this type of riding so we're going to come up to the end of this road now and uh, hang a steep left so i'm going to just mess around a little bit with the rider modes so i'm in road mode at the moment which is full power but with quite a lot of traction control and then if i go into sport mode it's obviously less traction control still full power but what i want to put it into is rider mode and that's where you get to choose what you want and you can behave like a hooligan so uh, if we're just going to switch this down now as i say you can do it on the fly just going slowly keep my eyes on the road and then once we're into that mode of course off we go and we can start to do things like skids and wheelies and stuff not that you would ever want to do that on a public road of course so that definitely wasn't a little wheelie there and that definitely wasn't another one there but enough of being a hooligan um, let's talk about how many stars we're going to give this and it will come as no surprise that I'm going to give this bike five stars out of five for its ability to go blasting across the countryside generally riding around being a hooligan and just having the best time ever an easy and well-deserved five out of five so now it's time to talk about touring and here we are on the lovely open winding roads of Wales and touring through the bunch of mates of mine which we did earlier in the year and there is actually a video all about this up on my channel as well. We were in the saddle for a, what eight and a half hours obviously we stopped for things like lunch and tea breaks and so on but it was eight and a half hours got to the other end and my dodgy old knees were absolutely fine no pains in my back or anything else but I kind of expected that this is a an upright naked bike and it's got a really sort of neutral sitting position so absolutely no issues at all with comfort levels the bike itself behaved impeccably started first time every time hot or cold and i certainly wasn't the first person to put my hand up and say i need fuel so the range on the tank was pretty good as well i get something like about 160 odd miles out of a tank possibly a little bit more you'd be forgiven for thinking that this would be a dead easy five stars out of five but there is a sting in the tail so let's get back to Gloucester and find out what that problem might be 
The rear tailpiece on the Z900 is without doubt a thing of beauty, but if like me you've installed a tail tidy, it leaves your indicators about three quarters of the way along, and that makes it a real challenge to find a set of rear panniers that fit this bike. In fact, I've yet to find a set that will go over there. That leaves you then with a couple of limited options. I wouldn't put a top box on one of these. You can go with a tail pack like this one, but it doesn't leave you an awful lot of room to sit down, or of course you can always wear a rucksack. But either way, not ideal if you've got to take a lot of luggage with you. Now there is, however, one more fundamental problem. You see, if we're going to go touring, the chances are that you're going to want to take a friend or your other half and put them on there as a pillion. Now, here's the problem. This position just here is probably the most uncomfortable seat I've ever sat in. Now, my wife has tried this once and refuses now to go on the back of my bike. So what I would suggest then is that if you are gonna to go touring with a friend, a partner, then um, this is not the bike for you because this really is desperately uncomfortable and actually very high up as well. I'm not entirely sure how I'll get down. As a touring bike, I'm just going to knock off one star for its limited luggage carrying capabilities. However, if you wanted to use this bike to tour with a pillion on the back, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give it no stars whatsoever. Okay, now it's time to move on then, and we're going to talk about how good the bike looks and just how cool you feel on it. Looks on a bike are really important to me. You see, the Z900 is easily faster than I'll ever need. But then again, so is every other bike in this category. So what do I care if one bike goes 5 miles an hour faster than another one, or can do 0 to 60 in 0.2 seconds faster? So I look at two things. Firstly, value for money, which this definitely gives you. And the second thing I look at is the looks. Again, as I mentioned in the start of this video, I want to walk away from my bike, look back at it and think, yes please, that is my bike. And I get that every time I look at it. From the aggressive headlights to the broad shoulders that sit across those four cylinders, the slim waist where you sit down and the tail that flicks up in the air. Kawasaki call the look Sugomi. For me, it's just the best looking bike in its class. And for that reason, I'm going to give it a really easy five stars out of five. So my summary of this bike then is that it is completely awesome, unless you want to put somebody on the back or compete on the track. Now, if I had my time again, would I buy this bike? Well, I bought it back in January of 2021, and at that time, the two main competitors were the Triumph Street Triple and the Yamaha MT-09. Now, the Triumph was a little bit more expensive than this, and I didn't like the styling around those front lights. The Yamaha was getting a bit long in the tooth and, quite frankly, needed an update. So, yes, absolutely, if I had my time again, I would definitely buy this bike. So would I buy it now, in October time, in 2021? Well. To be honest, I'd wait a couple of months and wait for the SE to come out because this is going to be devalued and effectively redundant. The only wrinkle in all of that is that the MT-09 of course got a major upgrade this year and uh, it's looking pretty good. So would I buy an MT-09 instead of one of these? Well, that's a bit of a tough decision and there's only really one way to find out. So I look forward then to my next video when hopefully, if Yamaha let me, I'm going to be whizzing around the countryside on a nice new MT-09. Right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and enjoy a couple of the outtakes. See you later. Now you probably saw this one earlier. It's dark, there's traffic going in both directions. It's really busy. And then this lady steps right out into the middle of the road and tries to walk in front of me. So I have to swerve the bike really hard to the left to avoid her. Later on, same journey, but I'll go waiting to cross the road on her bike. Now she doesn't even bother to look left. And then, oh my God. Luckily, she got away with that one, and well done to that car driver. If you imagine that a Pinagal is a supermodel, this is more of a page three girl. Arguably better looking, probably more fun to be with, definitely lower maintenance, and you just want to ride it three times a day. I cannot say that, can I? Oh, God. Jesus. My mum might be watching this.